guys, it's Kelly here. In today's video, we are going to be using some new products from Pink Fresh. Um, this is not only new products, but a new company for me. And uh, we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. So this is the Rainbow Floral, Rainbow Floral Washi Set, if I could talk. Um, and these are just a little bit bigger than my Misty, my regular size Misty. And so I have the big one, the 12 by 12 one, which doesn't really fit great on my camera. I'm going to, or like with the camera, I'm going to be honest. I am stamping in their black ink, which I have to tell you, I found quite lovely. Um, I love discovering new companies and I will tell you how I ended up with this one in just a minute. Um, but so here I'm going to stamp these. These things are fantastic. I know that they've been on the market for a while and I know that um, you guys are probably familiar with them, but they are new to me and I love them. So the whole premise of this is this is one stamp. So when I stamp this down, I'm going to stamp all of these separate images at the same time. So that's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven images all at the same time. And um, like you see, I had to like flip flop my Misty so that you could see me inking it up and you can see me stamping it uh, just because my area um, is really just maybe 11 by like 15. So there's not a lot of room here for a 12 by 12 stamper. I did end up having to stamp it twice um, because it's a new stamp. I did not prepare it in any way. And also I'm trying to stamp with this enormous Misty, which is great if you're a scrapbooker and you're looking to stamp on like 12 by 12 pages. Um, but I'm mostly a card maker. Scrapbooking is kind of, you know, in my past, but they, Pink Fresh has some wonderful, wonderful, um, talented artists that do scrapbooking with their, with their products and they're fantastic. Um, I just lost my spark for it. I tried after I became a card maker and I just couldn't, couldn't get it done. So anywho, I did end up um, stamping this twice. This is the entire piece. The piece that I am stamping on is um, one half of a eight and a half by 11. So normally I cut them down and then cut them down to A2. So I just left the size as a, a side as a whole. Um, on the back of these products, on the back of all of them, so it's not just like I'm showing you the stencils, but it's not just the stencils. There are stencils, there are stamps, there are dies, then they all match and they're all one piece. And then there's also washi tape that is beautiful. This particular stamp, um, that's why they call it a rainbow floral, which is how I picked it because the washi tape was so beautiful. It's got all this rainbow watercolor on it. It's stunning. Um, but anywho, so here I'm just going to be doing some uh, blending with my Distress inks. There's four stencils that are included in this. It makes it like cake. I mean, it's so easy to just get in there and apply color. I could definitely see if you were mass producing um, something, how this would be so very helpful to have a beautiful design really, really easily. So I am going to tell you, I was super, super excited about them as if you couldn't tell. Um, but for the Misty thing, I did use the big one. I used the, the big one. Uh, but I did see Annette on the Pink Fresh um, website had a video and what she did is even more genius. So she used a regular size Misty, which is normally, I think, eight by eight. And what she did was she secured the base of it down and used the outside of the door, which is obviously larger um, because it completely covers the Misty. The inset of a Misty is an 8x8, but the outside of the door, I think, is a 10x10. 10 10. And so it is big enough to put the stamp on. And then she used the outside of the door to stamp, um, which is really fantastic. I will link to her video so you can see what I'm talking about. I wish I would have I wish I would have done some sort of research before I did mine and I probably wouldn't have got the big guy out but you know whatever it's good to use your supplies um, so here I've done the greenery I just did two colors there um, and there is a third layer for the leaves which I will put on at the end but right now we're gonna move on to the flowers now it's a the the name of it is rainbow floral and so I was like I want to add a couple of different colors in here 
And so while I did not do a full rainbow, I think that would be stunning um, because I know how much I love that washi tape. Uh, I did not do that. But what I did do is um, just pick a couple of distressing colors that I thought would work well together. And so I used Salty Ocean. I used Picked Raspberry. I used Wilted Violet. And I used Abandoned Coral. Um, I have some regrets about the Abandoned Coral, but I was trying to mix it up a little bit because I used the pink, blue, purple combo quite a bit. So just trying to branch out a smidge. Um, like I said, I'm not sure. I think they came out pretty in the end, but I had to do a little bit of, um, oh, what is the word that I want? Like a little bit of triage for my blending because of the colors that I, I chose. Uh, damage control. That's what I was thinking. Um, so anyway, how I got turned on to this wonderful company is because, as you all know, and I'm sure that you, this has happened to you guys as well, um, we all make friends in this craft industry because crafters are wonderful people. And so some friends we only know online and some friends we know in real life. Um, but regardless, those friendships are not any less meaningful or valuable because maybe they're only online. But my friend, Emily Midget, um, I have met her in real life. Um, I think I told you this story, funny story, when I first met Emily, it was at a craft retreat. And she and I got along really well and kind of hit it off. And then um, we were, this is pre-COVID, so no judgment, okay, <laughs> pre-COVID. Um, we were, it was probably like the second or third day of retreat. And so we've kind of developed, developed a rapport and, and, you know, are starting the building blocks of what eventually will be a years long friendship. Um, and somebody had given me a cold piece of pizza and I was eating the cold piece of pizza <laughs> and I was like, does anybody else want, like anybody else interested in like the cold pizza? And Emily is like, I will take a piece. And then she looks at me and she was like, if anybody ever told me that like I would be eating Kelly Latavola, because at the time that was my last name, Kelly Latavola's leftover cold pizza, I would have told them that they were a liar. And that's how Emily and I became friends. Um, but she is, she's a wonderful person, first of all. Um, she's just a fantastic human being. And, um, but she's also a endlessly talented illustrator. And so she's kind of branched out a little bit in the last couple of years with her illustrations. And I'm so proud of her and so happy for her. And um, so she started illustrating for Pink Fresh. And that is how I ended up with this wonderful product to make um, this beautiful card with. And I was turned on to a new company, which I'm just thrilled about. And I get to support my friend. Um, so it's all it's wins all around. Wins, wins, wins. Um, there are several, like, I guess to me, um, and the, in having conversation with Emily as a friend, like we have different, um, affiliates, like people, different people that we're affiliated with. And she might work for one company that I don't, uh, work for, or I might work for a company that she doesn't work for, um, or have different relationships or, or different things like that. And in having conversation with her, she was like, um, you know, I never want to send you something like that maybe you're uncomfortable working with. And I was like, dude, we are friends. Um, so at the end of the day, anything that you have drawn, I will support always, always, always. That does not change. Um, and it makes me very sad because I think at some point maybe there was a, like a friendship um, or a business arrangement or something that happened that made her feel like that was not the case. Um, but I feel like your friends um, should only support and love and celebrate your accomplishments. And that's true in any friendship. Um, so if you have people in your life who are not just in your cheering section rallying you on to achieve the things um, that you want to accomplish for yourself, those people aren't real friends. Okay. Let's just, let's get that out there. Those people are not real friends. Um, and I think that as women, especially because society breeds this competition, this, um, you know, that it has to be a, well, I'm better than, or I have more, or I've achieved this. Like, dude, there is enough to go around. There is enough to go around. You, it doesn't dim your light to light somebody else's candle by any means. So anyway, look at this beautiful card. It's gorgeous. Here's where I went awry. Do you see the red, the abandoned coral that I used as the shadow? Me no likey. I don't like it. 
Um, and so it has nothing to do with the set, the stamp or the stencil. Um, it's just because of the color combination that I chose and I didn't really love it. So enter the Copics. You guys know that I'm not starting over, especially not at this stage in the game. And also, um, I'm going to try to fix it because that's just what I do. So I thought about going in now I'm working on Nina 80 pound um so it's not made for a lot of water but I thought about okay well what if I went in and just like with a little bit of water and real lightly went over it because they're distressing so they should react and maybe I could blend it but then I rejected that idea because I'm working on not watercolor paper and I didn't want to warp the images so I ultimately I could have used colored pencils that is true but you know I'm much more comfortable with markers and so that's the route that I went um, and I'm just trying to blend in those shadows a little bit more. Again, this was my own, <laughs> this was my own doing. Um, but I decided that I couldn't just do the red because then the rest of them would look under blended. And so I just decided that I was just going to pick one color for each one and try to blend it into the flower just a little bit more. And in the future, I'll be much more selective about what color I use as a shadow. It might require a little bit more experimentation from me, but does that really matter when you end up with such beautiful images? No, no, it doesn't. Um, I will happily ink blend away these uh, washi sets um, to get these beautiful results. I'm totally fine with it. It didn't take me any time at all, really. Um, so, but yeah, like if you have, if you have friends who are not um, just in your corner or if you have a friend who will help you but then feels the need to tell everybody else how, you know, they had to come to your rescue, that ain't a friend, bro. Mm -mm, no, get new ones. Get new ones. Get better ones. People who love you and support you unconditionally or, and are happy when you succeed and are sad when you're sad and they are genuinely, you know, good people who want what's best for you. Get those kind of friends. Um, because I'm lucky enough to have them. And so I would never have even discovered this if I wasn't friends with a super wonderful person who wanted to support me as well as me supporting her um, in her new-ish, new-ish. You've probably seen, she sells her own illustrations on her website and I have done a video on them before. I'll link that below too, um, just so you can kind of check out what she's got going on. But she illustrates pretty steadily for Pink Fresh and um, their sets are just gorgeous. Her work is just, is beautiful. And so I would encourage you to check out their newest release and anything else on their website. Um, so yeah, that's that with the Copa coloring. Now, um, once this, I told you they're all one piece. I was so excited. I was telling Eric about it. I was like, this is awesome. Like you can make so many cards from just one piece that you stamp and color, but you know, I can't leave anything alone. I just cannot. And so I wanted to do a little bit of something to make it my own. Enter the white gel pen. And so here what I'm doing is I am adding little white highlights to the flowers, to the berries. Um, and then I'm also, it did take, this took me longer probably than the ink blending. <laughs> this is probably the most time consuming part of my card. But once I put the little highlights on there, what I did was I went back on the little leaves and I put in some white dot detail um, just to add a little something extra that kind of made it my own. Uh, if you follow my channel, you guys know that I'm a real big fan of that. I like making designs um, unique to my style of card making. And um, that's one way that I can do that. Um, so here is me putting in the little dots on the leaves just as a little extra flourish, a little extra something, something going on. And I really like the way that they look. Um, that's my inner Kathy Rekusen coming out, who is another friend of mine who is, again, just fabulously talented and a really wonderful person. I'm very blessed in the friendship department. Um, so I'm going to do that. And then, you know, I like to outline everything. These particular flowers, and I can't speak for the rest of them, but these particular flowers have pretty fine lines. I like a bolder black outline, um, and so I'm going to go through with a um, Copic Safe or alcohol marker safe pen and just kind of re-outline these um, to make them a little bit bolder and change the line width. And I just, that's just a look that I like, especially when I know that I'm going to be stamping my sentiments in black, just kind of bring it all together and tie it all together. Here's the dies that match the set. Everything lines up perfectly like it's so easy oh my gosh I need easy in my life right now you saw my or you heard my last video where I was just completely stressed out over trying to find Caitlin's medicine so like 
I need easy in my life. I just took three, like I ripped them in, I ripped them in thirds. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I didn't want to waste my purple tape. And so I just took three kind of longer strands and put them um, right over like top, middle, bottom and ran it through my um, Spellbinders Platinum to cut all of those out. It was super easy. I didn't have any issues. Uh, even though it's larger, I didn't need like an extra shim or anything like that um, to make it go through. And it cut out. I mean, I just could not believe all of the pretty things that I was left with. I was like, I'm going to be able to make so many cards, so many cards. And so I kind of played around with them to see how maybe I would pair them together. And while you could definitely make more than three, I chose to make three cards with what I had going on here. And I used sentiments from this same set. Um, you know, you could even do like two. I love the little wreath. The wreath is adorable and totally will carry one of my cards all by itself. And then I kind of played around with the other pieces to see how to pair them together. My dogs are barking. They're awful. My mom's downstairs with the baby. Um, so here they're also releasing these nested diamonds um, and they have a bunch of other shapes too, but I just got the diamonds to work with. They have regular dies, but then they also have these hot foil um, plates, which again, I think I've been living under a rock because I didn't even know, but I guess Pink French has a bunch of like hot foil items that you can use. So fantastic. Um, so here I'm just putting it on my platform. I'm waiting for this to go ahead and heat up. I probably didn't even need to leave this part of the video in, but I edited this video while I was at my actual job. And so I probably wasn't paying attention to this part. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. You guys all know that I have multiple things on my plate and I'm doing double, triple duty. And um, so sometimes that means I have to edit my video while I'm at work. So now at this point, it's all done and it's ready to go. My lights turned green. I opted for the silver foil this time. This is the same silver foil that came with my glimmer machine, but you certainly could purchase it from um, the store to get it up. I'm going to lay this down with the shiny side down. Um, and I have both of my diamonds there. I'm going to put my card um, stack on top and then I'm going to put my shims on, unplug it uh, from the base and run it through my die cutting machine. Now one of you very helpful, well multiple of you very helpful crafters told me how to clean my plate with the acetate uh, nail polish remover and I totally appreciate that. Um, but another one of you told me not to put my plates on top until I unplugged it from the base to uh, keep it from shifting around, which I also appreciate is a wonderful tip. I love that we have this back and forth relationship in which I can help you and you can help me. It's fantastic. So check out this foil. It's absolutely stunning. And I don't even really like silver. You know, I'm a gold girl, but I think it's so pretty. So here I'm just going to take these off. I'm going to set them on the little uh, mat that comes with my glimmer machine so that they can cool off and I can move them off of my desk so that I can move on to the next thing. Here I'm going to, these are the nested um, diamonds dies. Now when I started doing this, I started on the outside and really what I found worked for me was starting on the inside with the smallest diamond and then working toward the outside of it. So I put down the first one and then I put the tape on the inside. Now I'm going to put down the second one and I was real careful with the tape so that it kind of was um, up or I moved the other pieces to hold it. Um, like the one on the bottom right, you can see I left it sticking up a bit so that I could get in the next die and then use that piece of tape to hold it down. In doing it this way, first of all, I was being super lazy because I didn't want to have to like foil and wait for it to heat up again so I could foil again. I was just doing them at the same time. Um, but I also found that that meant that I got the middle part, um, which I think is very cute. The middle part between the two diamonds, that little white, I got like an extra thin diamond out of it. Now, I didn't end up using it for these cards, though I did, my crafty brain did try to make that happen, um, but I just could, I just couldn't get there. So here's my my two foiled diamonds, which are beautiful, um, and then you'll see that I'll be able to. There's the two foiled ones, and then look at this little cute thin guy. He's adorable, and I could probably use him somewhere else. So I'm not gonna throw him away. I'm gonna keep him. Uh, Eric will say that I'm a hoarder. 
So here I've kind of got the general idea of how I'm going to use my pieces parts for my three cards and I'm trying to get my sentiments set up so that I can put them in my Misty and stamp them where they need to go. This last one here on the right I didn't really love and so I decided to see if I could change it to make it an A2 um, vertical card instead of a horizontal one. And so I played around with that and I did find a way to make that work though it makes my card look a little bit well I always called it sturdier because I didn't want to say squat squats didn't sound it didn't sound very nice so like when I was describing someone who was a little shorter and a little like a, one of the guys that were shorter a little wide he's sturdy um and so that's how I feel it makes the card look it makes it look a little sturdy but I still think that it's pretty and I'm I'm okay with it the sentiments in this particular set are super encouraging um which I really like this one that I just stamped here um I it says I wish we were in the same place and then there's other ones um that I used which is like every step you have taken matters so if you have somebody in your life who's you know kind of overcome some struggles um or the other one is um let me think what you what you do today well hold on i gotta flip it over i can't read it guys can't do it um what you do today will improve your tomorrow which is 100 percent true and why i tell you guys all the time that you like sell you on the practice when you're not happy with the way things look because what you do today is going to affect your tomorrow and practice 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 will totally make you better at whatever it is you decide to spend your precious time on so with all of these i decided to pop them up on foam for the wreath, like it's big, it's beautiful. It was totally enough to carry this card. I paired it with that sentiment and then I moved on to the next. In order to make the foaming portion of it easier, I decided that I was going to glue them all together as one piece. So here what you see me doing is putting glue on the back of the diamond so that I can pick up that leaf in the back. And then now I'm going to put glue on the front of the diamond to glue the... Um, top part of the floral on there so then once I have them all joined together I can flip them over put foam on them as one piece which will again help them stay attached to each other but also make it substantially easier for me to attach it to my card base um just a lot of teeny tiny little foam pieces so many teeny tinies um but yeah like I just I cannot wait I I also have um the I think it's the hibiscus one I can't wait to use it I'm so very excited um just because it was so easy and I got to make so many cards out of it and I feel like it will give me different ways to be creative um and I'm all about that especially on my limited time so here I did the same thing um as far as joining them together as one I think this one is my favorite card it's hard to pick it's so hard to choose um, but I do think that this one is my favorite one just because I like the, I like the sentiment, but I really like the large diamond and like the two different opposing um, flowers. I just feel like it's a good, strong card design. And I love the colors of the flowers. Like they're super pretty. And I love, you know, guys know I love color variation. That's no great secret. The only thing I did with this one is um, when I tucked this in there, there's a stem on that top left flower that I didn't really love. And so I did go in there and uh, just trim it off, just cut it right off. Um, so that way it wasn't hanging out into my other leaves and I liked the look of that better. But I mean, ultimately, I didn't have to do a whole lot um, other than stamp it ink blend it, die cut it, and bam, I was on my way to making three really, really pretty cards that I, you know, um, could use as a set or I could, um, you know, give to individual people as a source of encouragement. Um, so yeah, I'm thrilled. I'm so grateful to Emily to, to getting me in touch with this company and for them allowing me to use their products. Um, just amazing. So I will link below, encourage you to check out the rest of their release. Um, just really beautiful stuff. So the last thing I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to add the shimmers. I totally am. Um, be careful because we used uh, Distress Ink, which does react with moisture. So we have to be careful about how much moisture we're using 
um, because it may move the ink around. But that's it. That's all three cards. Um, Thank you guys so much for joining me and spending your time with me. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your week and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.